Hold up, put your hands on your Bibles and repeat after me. Say, this is my Bible. This is my Bible. It is God revealing himself to me. It is God revealing himself to me. In it he shows me. In it he shows me. He's the faithful covenant keeping God. He is the faithful covenant keeping God. Through my trust in his word. Through my trust in his word. He includes me in his covenant. He includes me in his covenant. Therefore, Therefore I, am I am who the covenant says I am. And I, do and I do what the covenant says to do. And I receive everything the covenant says is mine. I am a believer, not a doubter. So I claim eyes to see and ears to hear what the Spirit of God is delivering to the people of God. And I am not just listening. I am, to do. I am listening to do. So God performs his word, so performs his word. In, my life, in my life, just like he promised. Like he promised. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. Um, we are on the threshold of 2024. Uh, 24 is a significant number biblically in the Bible. It is a significant number. Um, so I'm going to talk to you about that for a moment first. All right. Numerology, believers, disciples actually have nothing to do with numerology. Numerology exists because God did give significance to number. There's a whole book in his word from the beginning. Numbers. But looking to numbers, that's backwards. God <laughs> made numbers. So God put significance to numbers. So you look at God and pay attention when he's speaking to you in numbers. This is 24. Now, 24 is, as I mentioned, very significant in Scripture. Uh Bottom line, if we were going to encapsulate it, it represents uh, the priesthood and, and pure worship of God, as well as signifying perfection, completeness, and wholeness. 24. Because 24 is a multiple of 12. It's twice 12, in case you didn't know. And 12 is seriously significant in Scripture. So 24 is, you got it. If God says something twice, it's done. There's no question about it. It is established. Now, 12 is very significant in the Bible itself because that is designating uh, the perfection, the completeness, the wholeness of God's order, his government, his kingdom. Real quickly, have you ever seen 12 in the Bible? God's nation, the nation he created. They didn't get him to choose them. He created them. His nation, the people he created, are known for how many groups? Twelve, Twelve tribes. When Jesus walked the earth, he chose how many to personally, dedicatedly train? Twelve, Twelve apostles. You, get, you getting the drift? <laughs> In God's city which will be coming to earth. How many gates are there in that city? Twelve. Twelve gates. How many foundations are holding that city's walls up? Twelve found it. Y'all, y'all get it. It is, it is. He lives in it. It surrounds him. He's given it significance. Twelve. What's 24? Hmm? So you're talking about it symbolizing God's power and authority. 
that serves as his perfect, perfect, excuse me, governmental foundation. And then he got 24, twice that. The higher form of, 20, of 12. Mm -hmm. And it's connected to the work and duty of God. Mm, I got quiet. Yeah, you, you, you didn't hear that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The work and duty of who? God. Yeah, him doing what he does. He's the only true priest. Jesus is our great high priest. Ah, oh, come on. <laughs> so, if you remember when God gave his priest, there are how many courses given to those priests? 24. Every I don't want to get too deep into that, but every priest serves on a course of 24, ro a, a rotation of 24, which basically means uh, they serve twice a year, and then every priest serves three times a year on uh, high holy days. Yeah, that's that. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's his total. That's God doing that. That, that's him doing the duty and the work, getting his people involved. What do priests do? Represent people before God. Mm. Now, here's God, 24, uh, responsible for the work and duty. Perfect priest. What does he do? What does your great high priest do? Jesus. What does God do? Represents you. Okay. <laughs> for... Him, he does it to himself for himself on your behalf. Okay. I, I'm, I'm teaching better than you're talking to me. Okay, so you're, 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 you're warm up. So there's 24 courses in God's true priesthood to serve in the temple of God. Uh, last time I checked, God made the day. <laughs> All days. How do you know a day? 24 hours. Made up of two parts of 12 each. 12 for the day, 12. For, okay. If, if you pay attention in Scripture, God records the day, 6 a.m., 6 p.m. That's 12 hours. The other 12, 6 p to 6 a, that's called night. That's why evening. That's why you say good evening. Stop saying good evening in the afternoon. Well, you tell me when good evening starts. After 6 p.m. You got it. Okay, and just keeping the pattern I've given you, brief pattern, then there's also 24 in heaven as well. How many are before the throne of God in his city with the 12 you get closer, see, now there's 24 elders around that throne casting their crowns before the Lord, talking about how holy he is, how perfect he is, because it's his duty, it's his honor, it's his work. They recognize everything else has been a waste. Vanity. Glory to God. That's just a little background of the numbers. Now, before I get into talking to you about what he's sharing for this year, glory to God, I must remind you, God does not operate in a vacuum. Oh, boy, maybe I should do that. Every year I seek God. Every year he's given me insight, given us insight for that year. <laughs> and every year. <laughs> I have my notes here. I could run. I could run them down to you, and they're all building. Okay, actually, I'm I, okay. Holy Spirit, I, I'm, yeah. Um, mm, if I just go back, <laughs> I 
in 2019, it was the year of dedicated action. You're going to hear that this year. 2020 was the year of pre unprecedented <laughs> manifestations. You're laughing, those who know, because we get the word before the year. And if you Google, you can AI this crap now, everything, and you Google the word of the year. We had it here first. They couldn't keep unprecedented out their face. But God spoke to us in December before. They didn't get it going until like March. And told, gives us instruction all the way through. God does not miss. 21 continued the unprecedented manifestations, but talking about supernatural supply. What a year we had. Everybody else was talking, do, 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 do. we had <laughs> one of the best years ever. 22 is accelerated development in preparation for glory. That You're going to hear that in the, oh my goodness. And then last year, or excuse me, <laughs> this year, you better know what it is. I said you better know what it is. Come on, tell me what this year is. Ooh, that was a little shaky. You in it in, in, in. And so, listen, it, God said, all of that's indispensable, but it is crucial. God said it is crucial that truth remains the way of life for me, Amen. meaning you. Amen. You don't leave it off in 2023. Oh. What is the truth? Him, his word. He is the truth. But specifically, he's drawing attention to his word, what he has said. Jesus said, sanctify my people with your truth. Your, and he follows right up, your, talking to the Father, your word is truth. So as we talked about this year, first place and final. Always. I hope you're getting better at that or you got excellent at that in 2023. Don't, I think I should. No. Nope. No. You don't think right. Before I even start thinking about something, God, what'd you say? And before you pull the trigger. I, well, I do that a lot now. Man. You said you cannot go wrong. Don't do that. You're going wrong. And we're in the days of no coming back. You could make the wrong move. But don't have to. I mean, you, 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 don't get scared now. No, stay still. <laughs> we're free. But he just emphasized just you've got to keep the truth is the way of life from here on out. Why? Because you got to keep the faith. No word, no faith. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by God's word. Not a word, his word. So it's crucial you maintain truth is the way of life because you got to keep the faith so that God's peace can keep you from being distracted by the enemy trying to steal what God has planned for you. Okay, you didn't get that. You got to keep the faith so God's peace can keep you from being distracted from the enemy stealing what God has planned for you. God is not doing anything. God is not planning for you. He's not making plans. He did it in the ancient past before you were even put together in your mama's womb, before your mama's great-grandmama was ever put together. God had finished your plans. So you can walk in. It doesn't mean you're going to walk in him. He didn't make you robots. He made you in his own image and likeness, but you can choose. He chooses to lead you into the things he's, play, he's planned for you, He's not going to force you into them. That's not God. That's not how it is. So I got to, if I'm, if I'm, if I'm missing it, I'm missing it. And I need to correct myself to get in line with God who's leading me. And I walk right into what he's playing for me. 
It's not luck. It's not good fortune. It's not being smart. It's not being wise. It's called being obedient. God has said throughout all time, the willing and obedient, they eat the good. Think about that. The willing and obedient, they always get the worm. <laughs> They're always rewarded. Okay, I got to get into this. We're not getting it. Think about that. Why? You, you got to know God for that really to click. The willing. He can't make you. You got to want it. You have to choose it. You have to will. The willing and what? Don't come up with nothing. <laughs> follow. I got to want to follow. It's People being destroyed is that simple, too. I ain't going to do that. He, look, don't. Uh, mm-hmm. His first people, he told them, don't eat that. I'm going to tell you what's going to happen if you do, right. before you do, so you don't. That's the word of God. And all they had to be was obedient. willing and obedient. And they would have ate everything else in that garden and been there for who knows how long. So this is nothing new, but, you know, people are funny today. They think God owes them entitlement. It's, it, if God says it's automatic, mm-mm, you got to be willing and obedient. You got you to gotta be committed to your own success. I'm committed to my my success. God says you make your own way prosperous and you shall have good success. He makes it possible, but he don't make me. He leads me, but I got to be willing and obedient. Boy, look at y'all. Look at somebody and say, are you either, neither, or both? Good night. Fix that now. Amen. Both. Amen. I am willing and I am obedient. Come on, I'm, I'm, I'm teaching better than you talking. I right, say, say, if you have both, say this with me. I commit to do whatever's necessary. I commit to do whatever's necessary. To have all God promised me. Try that again. I commit to do whatever is necessary. I commit to do whatever is necessary. To have all God has promised me. To have all God has promised me. You got you, you got to make that yours. These are some basic statements you want to have. The truth is the way of life for me. I don't need to be thinking about something, coming up with something. And I'm committed to do whatever. Nothing's too over the top, too high, too strict. See, people are sorely mistaken. I hear this too much. So that must mean it, it's around me. It don't take all that. It's the dumbest thing I ever heard. It don't take all that. Really, it don't take all that. Let me ask you a question. What did it take to get your driver's license? You don't take all that. Okay. <laughs> what it take to get your degree you so proud of? Yeah. Oh, don't take all that. Stop being an idiot. How'd you get that sentence? How you sitting behind them bars? It don't take all that. Shit sure took all that. It's a stupid. Don't let me hear that. Don't let me hear that again. It's the dumbest thing in the world. It don't take all that. It takes whatever he says if you want it. And he only tells you because he's already done it for you before you got here. So he knows you can do it. And he didn't tell you to do it alone anyhow. He says, you walk with me. You come with me. Not by your strength, not by your might, but by my spirit. Says He said that under the old covenant. And you're supposed to be filled with the Holy Spirit. So you can do all things. 
But are you committed? See, God can't commit you to be committed. Your perseverance, your endurance, your focus, that's all you. Don't you ever blame God. You can't blame anybody else. So everyone who's, you know, succeeding in something, just run up to them and tell them, it don't take all that. And they're going to look at you like you're an idiot. LeBron, it don't take all that. I'm going to sit back and watch them crush your head. You know what I mean? Get out of here. Good. You, law, you ain't even competition. More for me. It takes discipline to be a disciple. Okay, 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 okay. Our time, our time, our time is gone. Our time. Whoo, here we go. Now, um, you've probably already seen it. So here we go. Prospering more in 2024. Amen. No, no, no. I know it sounds basic, simple, but you're missing it. Let's try that again. Prospering more in 2024. See, whether you understand it or not, you being here means he's prospered you. But you ain't seen nothing yet. But prospering more in 2024. Now, I'm not going to give you the full word today. You got to come tonight. You know, probably come out later in the message, but you got you to you come tonight. Y'all going to make me be here tonight, then I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to do what I'm going to do. I'm going to hold stuff back. So, uh, y'all say thank you, Pastor. Amen. Giving you encouragement and incentive. Amen. So I'm, I'm, I'm not going to give the full-fledged thing, but you know, and don't think that's easy, prospering more in 2024. Here, here's, a, here's a tagline God gave uh, which you should carry along with, prospering more 2024, mm-hmm. you advancing and possessing your greatest expectation yeah. in 2024. Yeah. Okay. So along with prospering more mm-hmm. in 2024 is you advancing. Mm-hmm. That's called personal, as you is. As all of you, you what? Advance, not decreasing, not falling behind, not retreating. You advancing and possessing. Your greatest expectations. Now, you meditate on that. You got your answer. It's, uh, it's, uh, that's why these are statements. You, you, you put these together, prospering more and more in 2024. That means you advance, or you make it personal. Me advancing. That means your faith, your discipline, your character, you becoming more like Christ in righteousness, peace, and joy. I know y'all running down to the next part. Stop getting distracted. You first. You prosper even as your your internal life, your real life. Yeah. This out here, you know, it's, it's fun and giggles. It ain't the real. It's, it's not the consequential. It's not the eternal. This here, eternal. So you advancing. Then you get in and possessing. And that's the order, too, always with God. Possessing what? Your greatest expectations in 2024. Okay, no, that's where you plant a big glory to God. Thank you, Lord. I receive that. Bid to me according to your word, Lord. Say on, Holy Spirit. Y'all got to get this right going into 2024. Faith believes and faith speaks always. Faith, believing, and sitting there and not saying something is not faith. Second Corinthians chapter 4, verse 13. I won't go there right now. Here's going back. 
faith believes, and they got to talk about it. it got to say. it got to say. And if you don't thank God ahead of time, you ain't received it. If you're waiting to see it, the enemy's going to keep it from you. So faith calls those things. Thank you, Lord. I'm possessing everything. You promised me my greatest expectations. That's where expectation comes from. Because you're advancing me. You're building me. You're increasing. You're, you're building me. You're increasing me to the exact image and stature of Jesus Christ. Amen. So you, you want more than that, you're going to come tonight or listen later. Okay. Now, now you got to put word to that. You can't just say, oh, God gave me two words for this. Oh, my goodness. Let's see how far we get today. So uh, Psalm 115. Hallelujah. Ooh, Psalm 115. My goodness. Uh, uh, now, I could jump into a verse, but just to remind people, and some people might not been around long enough to know, I don't cherry pick, and you can't just go in the Bible and pluck stuff out, because it sounds good. I mean, unfortunately, that's a lot of what you get these days, but, but it doesn't work. So, Psalm 115, if you got it, glory to God. What in 2024? Okay. Look at verse 14. The Lord shall increase you how? Did you write that? I didn't write that. That's been in there. The Lord, who, who shall? The Lord shall what? That's prospering more. Come on, the Lord shall increase you more and more, you and your children. You are blessed to the Lord who made heaven and earth. And here go people. Well, that's the, you know, this, this is the, okay, they ain't you. This ain't you. This is the idiots. That's, the, that's not TV. That's the Israel. That's the, that's the, shut up. <laughs> you, talking like that, have absolutely no scriptural, spiritual basis of why you bumping your gums. You was about as dumb as that door right there. I ain't called no names, but that stuff need to stop. So I'll back, I'll, I'll read it now how I should, it's from verse 12 at least. Context is king. You got verse 12. Say, I got it. got it. The Lord has been mindful of us. Stop. You got no scripture. What does that mean? See, the uninitiated thinks, oh, he thinks about us. No, he don't. What does God of the universe got time to think about you for? If you know this from Exodus chapter 1, 2, 3, if you know this from the scripture, it means he's mindful. When he says mindful, mindful means one thing. Covenant. Bereath. And I know y'all know that because that's your name, Bereath Christian, Bereath Christian. Mindful means covenant. He ain't thinking about you. He's thinking about what he has said over you and backed it with his life called covenant. So he think about that all the time. Any person in covenant don't think about it all the time are doomed. So the Lord has been mindful of us. It's covenant people. He will bless us. Why? Why are he going to bless us? Because he said so. We didn't. Glory to God. He will bless the house of Israel. See, see, see. Call me dumb as a door. Hold on. I'll call you dumber than something else in a minute. It's Israel. Well, I'm Israel. God started all this by picking one person and making the promise to me, his seed, Abram's seed, who didn't even exist when God promised it to him. Israel is somewhere in the middle there. They're an afterthought. I'm the forethought. You're the forethought. Yep. God talked to Abram and said, I bless you. My covenant's with you and your seed forever. Galatians 3.29 will blow your wig back. 
if your Christ, see, I'm in Christ Jesus. Anybody, anybody put their faith in Christ Jesus? Yeah. Well, if you be in Christ, then are you Abraham's seed? He ain't talking about seeds. He said seed and heirs according to the promise. This is me. Welcome to S-U Emma scripture, not S-O-M-E. And I will bless the house of Aaron. Well, that's a subgroup of the house of Israel, which are all subgroups of the seed. And I'm you, if you're in Christ, are the seed. So he goes on and says he will bless them. This, this clears it up right here. Those who fear him, those who walk in reverence in awe of him. Look, because that's in covenant, he said it. So you just fear him. So people say, well, that's not for us. And you don't fear him. That's your problem. Don't put that on us. Glory to God. Anybody here? See, I'm teaching better than y'all talking to me. Praise the Lord. Y'all getting that? I will bless those who fear me. Small and great. Y'all qualify. How's he going to bless? He gets specific. I'll increase you. More and more, you and your children, you are blessed to the Lord who has made heaven and earth, with, which usually is followed by and all that there and in them is, which means abundance, all the stuff. Glory to God. That's the first word he had for that. Here's your new covenant backup. Well, it's a supplement because you'll get it later if, if you hang around. First Timothy chapter four. Oh boy. So put this with it. First, you got Psalm 115. We could put first Timothy chapter four. And this is a reminder uh, in a nutshell of your responsibility in receiving the word. God's word to you for 2024, which is prospering you more. Could say and more. But if you really understand prospering, I mean, when God says prosper, that's not money. That's not material blessings only. If you're not healed too, you ain't prospering. If you're not righteous too, in a di it's prosperity is a huge word with God and it's all inclusive. And he said, you shall make your way prosperous and you shall have good success following him by his word if you be willing and obedient he's mindful over his what word he doesn't bless individuals but he blesses his word and if people are in line with his word it looks like they're blessed of the lord they are blessed of the lord but it's not personal i know some people can't take that burst burst their bubble but i don't care it sure works glory to god are you in first timothy four yes sir Am I going to? Is, are you getting this? Are you? I pray you receive this. All right, verse. This is to remind you of our responsibility. You want to have this. This is how you guarantee you see the fulfillment of this in your life. First Timothy four fifteen. Verse fifteen. Verse fifteen. If you got to say I'm there. I'm there. So God says, meditate on these things. Meditate doesn't mean think. It means talk to yourself, mutter them to yourself, say them audibly to yourself repeatedly over and over and over. Meditate my word day and night. It's a whole long spiritual exercise, him and trying to express to his children from the beginning. Meditate on these things. We'll talk about these things later. Because that would be necessary, right? Yeah. Uh, okay. Okay. <laughs> Maybe I'll do it now. Okay. Meditate on these things. That's one thing. This is a second thing. Give yourself wholly to them. What does holy mean? Spelled with a W. Com totally to them. What th them things you're meditating. Why? Oh, boy. So that you're profiting. You're prospering. You're advancing. You're succeeding may what? Come on, I can't hear you. Appear to everyone around you. Yes. 
they going to talk about it. Now, don't think they're going to talk nicely, but they're going to talk about it. Oh, y'all better get used to it. You get, you get the hundredfold with persecutions, Jesus said. Oh, you got quiet. See, I, yeah, I got quiet. Yeah. Now, I'm going to I like how people say, I shouldn't drive the car I drive. Well, you didn't buy it, so I don't care. I mean, it's just. Okay, y'all, see, 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 you couldn't take that. You better learn to take that. I didn't say a darn thing to nobody. They're sticking their nosy bit looking. See, they, it appears to them. That ain't my fault. <laughs> and what they say definitely ain't my fault. Who do you think you're driving that car? Me? That's who I think I am. I am who he says I am, not who you say I am. I'm not who I say I am. I am who he says I am. And I'm a joint heir with Jesus Christ. He says I'm his child. I mean, why do people say stupid stuff like that? Do they think I'm going to turn around? Hater, you got it right. You really think I'm going to turn around and hand them the key? Oh, they didn't give me no key, so screw that. What do you think I'm going to do, go sell it? I mean, well, just, 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 you know, that intelligence, you might just want to keep to yourself. I'm just giving you a little taste. Don't let them see where you live. Oh, Lord. Look at the clothes he wear. There, there, there. Look, look, look. God says, you better blind them with it. Let your light so shine before they see your good works and glorify God. And for those who are nosy, I've had the same car for this. This, this is now 11, 11 years. When, when you buy class, you know, it always look good. It still breaks next. But I don't treat it like trash either. It wasn't ordinary when I bought it. <laughs> Praise the Lord. I got what I wanted. There ain't really nothing else I, I, I want. So I've been a good steward. It's been paid off a long time. Now, what do I want? Mm-hmm, so that's good. I'm warming up on something. Y'all know about my Arnaz. It's still manifest. It hadn't manifested yet. I'm that much closer. But wait. Because now I'm warming up. I'm warming up. So that's the issue. God can't give people nothing either because they don't know what they want. Ooh, I want one of those. Something else goes by. Ooh, I like that. <laughs> and that's not what it really means when, when it's, you know, ask what you will or Whatever thing you desire when you pray, you gotta you gotta want it. You gotta know what it is, Amen. and it not be a pizza eaten too late at night, giving you indigestion and weird dreams. When you wake up, it's, it's still that. I'm, I'm teaching more than you know because people are like, hey, God hasn't given me what I want. You don't even know what you want. I've had my, that car that long just because you're nosy. And I've won an art. How long have I won an art? Nah, you all got me a, a model of it. I still got it. I look at it every day. They stopped making it. I don't got, ain't got nothing to do with me. You can't convince me there's not a Bentley Arnaz T silver stash somewhere. Because people with money, they don't need it. <laughs> you, I ain't got you wild imagination. It's just t- someone forgot about it. We God just got to connect us. I'm moving along. I, do I look stressed? I just can't live without that Bentley. Well, life's gonna be hell. You just told the devil what not to. I don't, I don't, I don't, it ain't nothing but.
for the toy at night? It's, it's just going to make people talk more. Because my prospering got to. Come on, keep your eyes on the word. Don't look. First place, final. Because my prosperity has to. If I'm walking with God. And all I can talk about, look, you can't see my joy. Hello, you can. And quit trying to suck all my joy. I'll go, let's go see Pastor. Get your own. The joy of the Lord. I can't talk to you about my righteousness and my holiness, isn't that? I got all that. That's why Jesus talks in terms of money and things, you know, because everyone can see, everyone can relate, and everybody sees it. Yeah. Praise the Lord, glory to God. Oh my goodness! Yeah, I'm, 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 I'm gonna leave it. We'll, we'll come back next time. Uh, these things, you just go up, next, you know, just go back up to verse twelve and read them. It's pretty clear, and it just kind of doubles down to verse sixteen. Take heed to yourself. And the teaching, the doctrine, continue. It's kind of the same from them. Continue what? In them. For in. For in. For in. Not thinking. Not praying about it. But doing. Will both save yourself. And those to whom your prosperity appears. To those who talk ugly about you. Don't even know you. You can't get mad at them. You notice I didn't call them names. I called them naysayers, ugly names. Well, I didn't call them names. I just told them they was dumb as a door. <laughs> notice I didn't say anything about people who talk about me. Yeah. You get down the way. Because it comes with it. Look, thank you. <laughs> Y'all get telling. Thank you. I'm teaching better than saying amen because you are I mean, you, th you think you're going to curl up and die. If anyone says one thing bad, because nah, nah, you, you, all you do is block them. <laughs> so you're, you cannot prosper. God says and guaranteed you, made prom. He did, you didn't. He said, a hundredfold do you get in this time with persecutions and in the time. See, if you can't understand that, how, how are you going to get the eternal life in the time to come? He said that to his disciples. He said, we've left everything. He said, you can't leave everything and not get a hundredfold now in this time. With? I mean, look, guys. Look how they talk about me. Who does he think he is? Read your Bible. That's what they say about him all the time. You have a demon. Who do you make yourself to be? I didn't. My dad made me. Read them gospels. I don't see people running up to Jesus. We're so glad you're here. I've seen people run them out of town for seeing one blessing. Oh, you got to get out of here. Can't take it. You know why? They're in the world and not God's kingdom. They got to warm up to it. They got to. That's why the appearing, or excuse me, the profiting appears. They, it can't dim. Light lights up the darkness. What are we doing here? I don't know. I'm following, following the Holy Spirit. This is trying to give you the word for the year. All right, so look. <laughs> uh, this year is uh, for, for separation and purifying. What, what's going to transpire this year is going to settle some and wipe others out. Yeah, you need to come here the whole thing. Oh, it's not automatic. You're going to get what you want, but be clear. Simultaneous. 2024 is a powerful year. Great event. Happening with frequency. And there are two sides to all of it. The right side and the wrong side. And so while it's all going on, listen to me. You got to come in. Listen. Same event. It's going to establish and settle some who are willing and obedient, those who are At the same time, it's going to wipe away the others. Okay. 
You gotta come. I'm, I'm, I'm not. I'm, I'm reporting. I'm, I'm a reporter. I, not, I, ain't, I ain't, I'm not saying this. This is the word of God. Yes. Amen. Amen. So let's, let's let's get in. You got an outline there. So number one, <laughs> the future of the righteous yes. is guaranteed to be bright. Not so much for anybody else. Be clear on what God says in his word. I'm even going to show you some examples, and it's going to be right there. It's going to be, it's like compare and contrast. But make sure you got that. The future of the righteous is what? Guaranteed to be bright. Not up and down. Not in and out. Bright. Guaranteed. If the righteous are, are doing this, you ain't holy. W-H-O-L-L-Y. Yeah, like he said, give yourself completely. Quit dragging a foot. Quit having a handout. Be all. That's what he said. Not what I said. That's what he said. And your profiting shall be apparent to, to all. And got to be all in. Amen. So he's talking about the righteous. Now, let, let's clear this up real quick. Who the righteous are, or another word for them is the just. They are not moral people. They are not people who are ethical. They are not people who are goody goodies. Like the world talks about and religion talks about, it's not what God talks about. The righteous are who he says the righteous are, the just are who he says the just are. So I'm going to be clear you're in on what he says because he does, it's not a mystery. Are you with me? In any body and everybody who wants to be can be made righteous. Yes. Yes, Lord. I don't know if you heard what I said. Can be made. That's right. You have to be made righteous or made just. You don't become. You don't get it. You don't do something to earn. No. So let's clear this up real quick, hopefully. Praise the Lord. You're not righteous because you deserve it. If you deserve righteousness, you ain't got it. There's a straight way to say it. God either makes one righteous or they're not righteous. Uh, Romans chapter 3. Whoo, our future is guaranteed to be bright. Now, now I'm talking about who the righteous are, who the just are. He used, God uses those terms interchangeably in the Bible. So uh, in Romans chapter 3, we get a hint or we get, we get a hit of it in verse 28. If you're there, say, I got it. I got it. All right, the rest of you can catch up. It says, therefore, we conclude. Yes. So we've had a whole conversation. Context, King. Had a whole conversation. We conclude after this conversation that a man, that's a person, is justified by faith, faith without. How are they justified? By faith. faith, trusting, acting on the Lord without the deeds of the law. Yep. Yeah. Being a good boy or girl. Those are the deeds of the law. And the word of God just, and I'm not saying you're not supposed to be good. You will be good after he make you right. But you trying to be good ain't never going to make you right. You'll get that at home. It makes it very clear there. It's by faith and not works. Very clear there. Amen. Amen. Uh, I'll give you one more. Uh, let's go to Galatians chapter 3. Glory to God. And this is by no means. This is just a little... I had, to, I had to give you something. It's all over Scripture. It's all through the Old Covenant, New Covenant, Galatians chapter 3. What's it say? Verse 24. Verse 24, what's it say? Therefore, the law okay, hold on a second. 
Verse 24. Yeah. Are, you, are you there? Yeah. All right, what's that? Verse 24, 324. Ooh. The law is a bunch of rules and codes that God gave himself. But he gave to prove to people, you can do it. If you read the scripture, that's why he gave it. The other reason he gave it is, without it, you don't know what sin is. And the Bible gives a nickname to the law, and it's called the ministration of death. And so it's quite interesting that so many religious folk are always trying to Go back to the law. See ya. It was nice knowing you. You're gone. Jesus said, I came to fulfill the law. Why? You can't. He said, I didn't come to do away with it. So if you go back to it, you're gone. If you put your trust in him, he makes you the righteousness of God. 2 Corinthians 5.21. Because he's fulfilled it all on our behalf for us. So we put our trust in him. That's being in covenant with him. God makes us his righteousness. Righteousness is an old English word that means in right standing. So there's nothing anyone can do to get right with God. Oh, no, y'all too quiet. See, I'm teaching better, better, better. You've heard your entire life. You better get right with Jesus. You better get right with God. I got news for you. Ain't no way in hell. You can't. You can't get right. You cannot get right. You can't even do right. When you come to God through faith in his son, he has promised to make you his right in right standing with him. I just showed you two places. How about Galatians 3? Excuse me, chapter 2. You got down your outline, right? Let's read this together. Chapter 2, verse 16. You ready? Yes. Let's read. It says, knowing that a man is not justified by the works of the law, but by faith in Jesus Christ. Even we have believed in Christ Jesus so that we might be justified by faith in Christ and not by the works of the law. For by the works of the law, no flesh shall be justified. Mic drop. I ain't talking, I don't have any discussion with you about it. You can't do nothing to get right. You either are or you're not. And it's by your faith. Properly placed faith. I'm not saying it, I can read. Knowing, it doesn't say guessing. It does not say we will find out. It says knowing. Because it's been proven over and over and over again. You, you know, the greatest proof is yourself. You ain't never done what God said to do. Can't be right, you won't be honest. And he didn't tell you, you could be. Knowing that a person, man means person, it's not a male, get over your gender issues. A man is not justified by the works. Those are deeds, people. That's what people got to do. Like, don't steal. That didn't stop nobody. Don't lie. Didn't stop you. You cross God's law one time, one place. He says you're guilty of the whole thing. Those are hymns terms. Not Patrick, not a denomination, not a that's why we're not we're not in that. We we in the truth. Amen. No person is justified by the works of law, but how? By faith in Jesus Christ, putting their confidence, their action, their trust in Jesus Christ. He did it. Even we have believed. That, that believe means trust, faith. In the Greek, that's what that word means. It's translated to English poorly, believe in Jesus Christ. Why? So that. Put it so. So you really get it. So that. For this reason. So that we might be justified. How? By faith. Justified means made righteous. How? By faith in Christ. And not. See, he just has to emphasize. He can't leave it alone. Leave your works. Your works are dead to me. Not by the works of the law. For by the works of the law, no flesh shall be 
justified. So who are the righteous? Who are the just? Those who put their faith in Jesus Christ and God makes right with him. And the future of the righteous is guaranteed to be bright. Not good folk. Not religious folk. The just, the righteous. Y'all with me? I, 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 can't, I can't lie. I got to shoot straight, but I, you got you to you make sure you're getting it straight. Because people run out of, I'm the righteous. I, I'm good. My, my future's guaranteed. You ain't right. Yes, I am. I'm a good person. Right there. You proved to me. You are no good. You talking about you. But you don't know what I did this holiday season. There you go again. You ain't right. God, is that the suit blind pattern? You are not right with God. Before you went to the soup line, you should have got right with God. You should have allowed him to justify you. Amen. You should have put your faith in his only son so he could make you righteous. Yes. Then what you do would be right. All right. You're putting the cart. Just want to make sure you get that. Cause I didn't say, oh, it's going to be good for you. 2024 might wipe you out. We might not see you again. Oh, come down. Oh, yeah. No, 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 no. But it's guaranteed to be bright. Amen. If you quit fooling around and put your trust in Jesus. How you know you say, Jesus? That's all you got? I mean, you ain't going to tell God you did. Jesus? If he can't save me, send me to hell. Because that's all I could do is put my trust in him. No, that's all I could do, right? Is put my trust in him. I don't know if you're banking on me, not lying, cheating, murdering, all that. Well, uh, too late. <laughs> Ain't time to play. It's time to hit the mark. It's time to put your faith in God. Look what he said. Because the future of the righteous is guaranteed to be bright. Oh, my goodness. It's not guaranteed to be right for everybody. Um, I, 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 we could go all over the Bible. Uh, I'm just going to stick in the book of wisdom a little bit. And, and let's just look at a couple things. Let's see. In, in Proverbs chapter 10, just give you some promises, some examples of promises to the just or the righteous. Don't shout me down. All right. Proverbs chapter 10. If you there, say, I got it. I mean, just look at verse 3. The Lord, who? The Lord. Will not suffer the soul of the righteous to famish. He ain't going to allow me to be famished, to go hungry, to go without. Thank you, Lord. Why? Because I'm so good? No, he justified me. Because he made me right by my faith in him. Y'all getting this? If you can't, I, we didn't finish reading the verse. But he cast away the substance of the, it's not going to be the same for everybody. This is separating time, and this is purifying time. Oh, ain't no hiding no more. People trying to slap lipstick on a pig for a few years now. Trying to, I'm all right. No, you ain't. Everybody who's in right, you can see your eyeballs popped out your skull. You almost bled out. But you're trying to... You a dead person walking. You a zombie trying to slap, make, and try to convince us you all right. You ain't all right. Salvation is here, but you ain't right. And the only reason you ain't right because you don't choose to be right. We ain't talking about your character. We're not talking about your character. We're talking about your choices. Your faith in you or Jesus. Your mama or Jesus. Your culture or Jesus. Because the wicked ain't making it. I, ha I got to, I'll tell you, like, I ain't got no guarantee for someone who's not righteous coming out this year. None. I'm, I'm, did I write any of this? Let me read this one one more time. The Lord will not suffer the soul of the righteous, those who he declared to be right with him, to what? Yeah. See, people don't want to see. Look, look. 
I'm getting persecution already because I'm declaring the truth. I don't believe it's like that. It don't matter. I'm reading the Bible. You know, it'd be another thing if it was my opinion. It's not. I got to live by it. You got, everybody does. But he cast away the substance of the wicked. <laughs> I won't even have your turn. Let's just stay in this. This, this is an awesome. This is a nice uh, chapter here. Where should we go next? How about, let's just keep it in order. Go Drop down a few verses. Six. Blessings are upon the head of who? Who are the just? Those who trust Jesus. You can make that. Blessings are on the head of who? The just. That's the same as righteous, right? Who are the just and righteous? But violence covers the mouth of the wicked. <laughs> Don't be acting like, I can't believe it happened to them. How couldn't you believe that happened to them? How can't you believe it didn't happen sooner? It didn't happen sooner by the mercy and the long suffering of God. Don't shout me down. Um, we'll stay here. Uh, let's just, okay, let's go down further. Verse 24. We'll stick in here. Don't look at verse 22, though. All right. don't, don't look at verse 22, though. Verse 24 says, the fear of the wicked shall come upon the wicked, but the desire. That's why I talked to you about desire a minute ago, not your whim, what you want, what you crave. The desire of the righteous, come on, talk to me, granted. You better look up grant in a real dictionary. That means you didn't work for it, you don't earn it, you don't deserve it. It's here you go. Some people don't know the difference between a grant and a loan until it's too late in school. And you didn't go to school right here. Okay, praise the Lord. Shoo. First thing he said, take the grant. Verse 25 goes on, says, as the whirlwind passes, so the wicked. Bye. We ain't against you. We're telling you. You ain't got no time to play. Just put your trust in Jesus. What do you think you're proving? Just put your trust in Jesus. Because as the world's going past, so the wicked. Bye. You seen, you, have you seen a tornado? You've been in a tornado? I've been in them. Bye. It was there a second ago. And it's not there. It doesn't happen slowly. And it happens catastrophically. But the righteous is an everlasting foundation. Can't be moved. Look, even if the house flies away, there that foundation. They walk around saying, there was a house here. How do you know if a house was there? Foundation ain't bu budged a lick. You better pay attention. Those who have ears to hear, they just got to hear. Um, 28. The hope of the the expectation of the Righteous. gladness. Okay, go back to what God said. Your tagline for this year is you advancing and your the hope. That's the same word as expectation of the righteous gladness. But the expectation of the wicked should perish. The way of the Lord is strength to the upright. Sounds like the righteous and just but instruction or destruction to the workers of iniquity. Wow. I mean, how quick can't heed this warning? The righteous shall never move. You don't move the foundation. But the wicked shall not inherit, inhabit, be on the earth. Wow. I did not write that. I wish I, wish I did because then y'all could blow it off. I wish this was my word, because then 
Y'all could just throw it, throw it out the other ear. It's not my word. Just like anybody else, I got to stand by this. I, I, I don't get no favors being up here. You better read your Bible. In fact, it's worse up here. That word, same word I got to live. And still get a sore judgment, a more strict judgment. So I ain't up here playing. I ain't going to tell you, try to hype you up. I don't need to hype you up. Give you the truth. You got ears. He's like, <laughs> it's good for me. But see, but you see, but you see the atmosphere. We got to see Saul. Uh, you need, holy. Quit playing. Holy. And if you love him, look him in the face and say, this ain't no game. Here's simple words of God. Make your choice. Don't choose wrong. Praise the Lord. Okay, I could go on and show you how the righteous are delivered out of trouble. Proverbs 11, 8, and 28. How they flourish. Everybody else going away. 12, Proverbs 12, 18, and 21 kind of do the same thing. They get out of trouble with the wicked coming in their stead. See, it's, it's, man. The enemy's out there. He's going to eat somebody. The righteous rejoices. They even have hope in their death. Oh, come on. Have expectation. Of, yeah. Great expectation. In your death. That's, that's Proverb 14, 9, and 32. And man, in, in the house of the righteous is much treasure. Hallelujah. Don't shout me down. Proverbs 15, Proverbs 15, 6. And their prayers are answered. Verse 29. I'll stop with this one in Proverbs 16, 13. Say, you know, they get hired. They're favored by the leaders. Yeah. Kings search out the righteous and just. Yeah. They'll make everybody else go away. We got that in Bible. Yeah. You ever heard of Daniel? Yeah. Hananiah? Yeah. Mishael? Azariah? You don't know their names, but you know their slave names. But that's their mama given names. Was it Meshach? I don't even know the old name. <laughs> A bad Negro? What? <laughs> See, I don't want to know no slave name. It's Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah. Amen. That's their name. And they were in a country that was sworn to kill them. They lied on them, changed laws on them. Sound for 20, 24. Changed laws on them to kill them. No weapon form. So they were thrown in the weapon. Everybody else died. This ain't Sunday school. This is true. This is verifiable. And they came walking out. And then what happened? They run the world. They run that wicked country. The king, oh, no. All, all my other little governors, y'all bow down to them. Oh, they hated that. Oh, they, that's how I started the whole thing to begin with. Give me a couple more minutes, at least to kind of give you. I don't want you to be half cocked today, right? You know. Mm. So I'm, I'm, I'm showing you very clearly, and maybe it's too clear for you. I, I ain't denying the news. Oh, it's bad. I got news for you. It's gonna get increasingly worse. God said so. But the future of the righteous is guaranteed bright but i can't act and play like it ain't gonna be it, no and i'm not denying the denial that's not faith faith is the victory that overcomes it all it's the fool who sees it and just keeps walking on and gets swallowed up by it it's the wise who dodge not dodge it but make themselves immune to it by putting their faith and the promises of God. Amen. You know, 2023 was pretty excellent around here. Amen. You can't say that for everybody. 
Don't make the mistake and say, all right, bad girl. No, they didn't. I do not deny the wickedness. I do not deny the evil. I don't deny the trouble. I deny it from having any access to me. Amen. You can do the same thing. Yeah. We've been talking about the peace of God. We will come back and talk about faith filled and fear free. But you have to let that peace do its job. God, he gives it to you, but you got to take it and you got to let it do its job. He says, so you take it and don't let your heart be troubled, anxious. Don't even let it get afraid. That's our job with his peace. So I take great comfort in knowing God telling me the future and having his provision and instruction and guidance. I can't mess it up unless I mess it up and I ain't messing it up. What about you? I mean, there's some people here making choices. Good Lord. Ask the person next to you, how about you? How about you? Tell them, tell, tell, come on, tell them, tell them, choose right. Choose right. Glory to God. Mm -hmm. You got to guard your heart with all diligence, with the peace of God, because out of your heart comes your life. All right, number two. <laughs> I don't know if going to help or not. <clears throat> We're in the season of Jesus' appearance. Hallelujah. That's, that's appearance, which is completely different, separate, and distinct from his coming or his return. Don't confuse it. And I'm talking scripturally. If you've got a real Bible appearance, it talks about appearance and it talks about coming. Two different things. The Greek words. Appearance is epiphania. Sounds like what? I had an epiphany or whatever. His coming is parousia, which is totally different. They don't sound like do they at all. No, it's totally different. And they are different activities. They are different events. They are not associated. All right. It's woe to the people who cross wires. You get shocked. You don't get shocked. So I'm being very clear. You see, I, to, I thought we'd be done in 10 minutes. I mean, this is very basic, very straightforward. <laughs> But people don't hear good. That means well. That means well. And, and my hands, clean. It's on them, Lord. I'm giving you and it's on them. I said what? Appearance. We are in the season of Jesus' appearance. He's going to appear at any time. It may be this year. Do you know, Pat? I do not, and nobody does. Anyone who says they do, I would get as far away from them as I could get. We don't know the time, the hour, the day. I, 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 not even don't, Jesus said, don't even ask me. My father alone. Jesus doesn't know his coming. No. But when you look up his appearing, he says he owns that. Yeah. Now, I appear in my time. Yeah. Two different things. You do not want to miss the appearing. Amen. It is all bad after that. This ain't even bad. This, 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 isn't even, this, this is barely, this ain't even warming up bad yet. As nasty, filthy, and bad as stuff has gotten. Um, oh, my goodness. Okay. Um, so if anybody tells you when they know he's coming back, get away. <laughs> just, 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 just get away. Just don't talk to him. Don't even, don't even try to tell him why you're getting away, but get away. In Matthew 24 tells you that very specifically in verse 26 or 36. But you got to understand what was asked at the beginning. Matthew 24, Jesus gets in very, he gets very specific, he gets very detailed about the question they asked. And they didn't ask about his appearing. They didn't ask about when you're going to come deliver us. They asked about his coming. 
end of the age. It doesn't matter, people. He's the truth, so he's got to answer what they ask, not what they meant. You better learn something on that. So you can't come here and try to make this mean what you want it to mean when he answered what they asked. It's kind of the experience we're having here today. I got to give it to you straight. So watch how you talk to God, because if you confuse, that's on you. He's going to tell you the truth. That's why <laughs> you've asked God some things, and he's told you. And you messed it up because you didn't understand not what he said. You didn't understand what you asked. You asked something because you're too casual with your words. That wasn't what you meant to ask. And you heard from God. And now you're taking what you heard from God and trying to scramble that because you scrambled what you started, which was your question. You didn't know what you, you didn't say what you mean. I mean what you said. Mm. I'm teaching better than you than you talking to me. Praise out that, that, that. That was good right there. Matthew uh, 24, 36, Jesus himself says, but of the day and the hour knows no person, no, not the angels of heaven, but my father only. Now, I don't know. Don't even talk. Don't, I don't know how he kept it from Jesus. Don't talk. Because no, no, no. the father, don't, don't, don't get cute. I don't, I don't even want to. Jesus don't know. The angels don't know. Just the father. But he's talking about his coming. Amen. What I want you to know even better is the admonition Jesus gave in Matthew. Now let's go to Mark 16. And here's the key for us. We do not know the hour, the day, the time, and all that. But Jesus says, you in big fat trouble, and woe to you if you can't read the signs of the times. Prince did not come up with that. He had his nose in the book. He needed a teacher. He got some false teachers, but you know, at least he was hungry. The Bible, Jesus talking about sign of the time. Uh, you in, in Mark 16, yeah. verse 1, the Pharisees, y'all there? The Pharisees also, with the Sadducees, oh boy, religious folk, they in trouble, came and tempting. Matthew 16. What'd you say, Mark? I don't know why you'd be in Mark. It's Matthew 16. Everybody knows that's Matthew 16. Why are you in Mark? Matthew 16, <laughs> verse 1. The Pharisees, also with the Sadducees. Sadducees, bad group, bad group. These people want to be right more than being right. They want to be right being more than being made right, like religious folk. They want to hold to their opinion, their perspective, in the face of the truth himself, sitting there telling them. And they come, to, you can tell, because they come to what? Tempting. And desiring him to show them a sign from heaven. They want a trick. And he answered and said to them, look, don't fall for signs, this and that. Look, how often, I ask that rhetorically, how often did Jesus say after a miracle was done, don't tell nobody? <laughs> again and again and again and again. So I, just, I, don't, I don't know the number. I'm going to ask you a specific number, but you all got it. More times than not. He said, don't tell nobody. And what did they immediately do? I mean, what would you do? Only if, you, only if you're a real disciple. He told me not. I just, if you were me, you wouldn't do it. But I'm, I just, listen to y'all. We're going to go tell somebody. And they did. He did that for two reasons. Mm. One, because he didn't want people to know. <laughs> it makes it hard for him to move. What's the second reason? Because that's not why he came. You didn't know that because you got sucked into the delusion of religion. 
who says he came to do tricks. Any idiot can do tricks. And people fake the miracles anyhow. He didn't, but people do. That's not what he came for. Selah. Yeah, yeah, we need to come back. He came to make a kingdom. Not a religion. He's coming to make a new government. Crush this government, make a new government. That's why the world was scared of him. I mean, back with Moses, they did tricks too. It's the infantile, the immature that look for, for, for tricks. And here they are, look, show us a trick. And he answered and said to them, when it's evening, you say, he didn't bite. He says, you say, what? The weather for, the, uh, it'll, be, it'll be fair weather. And they tell him why, because we, look, look at the red, the red sky. And in the morning, oh, it's going to be bad weather today. Why? Because they see the sky red and lower, it means overcast. He says, you hypocrites. Boom. Not, not kind, not nice, but truthful. You're hypocrites. You're one way out way, another way inside. You're hypocrites. You can discern the face of the sky. You sit and he tell me the weather. Why you listen to a weather man? You can discern the face of the sky. What's the problem? But you are not discerning the signs of the time. A wicked and an adulterous generation. See, I'm just, see, I, you know, I'm, I'm trying to stay on the right foot here. But you better discern the times. Woe to you, you don't discern the what? Time. What's going on around you? You're not trying to foretell, oh, he's coming this day. You will be wrong. And we're, you're going to be alone because we're getting away from you. But you best know the time. So I'm telling you. In case you haven't noticed, we are in the season. I don't know our time. We're in the vicinity. We're in the season of what? His appearing, coming back for his own. In case you don't know what that's referring to, it's the rapture. The rapture's not in the Bible. It's a Greek word, harposo. The catching, snatching away, it's nothing new. It's from the old covenant. It hasn't happened once. It hasn't happened twice. It hasn't happened three times. It's going to happen again and again. And I am going to be on the first one in this age. This one. People want to sit here and debate, reading Matthew 24. Oh, it's mid-tribulation. What's going to benefit you going to halfway through and then coming out? I'm not following that real well. Because you better finish anything you start. I don't understand. It. That sounds escapism to me. And then some are after tribulation, mid and post tribulation. I'm pre. I ain't going to argue with nobody. Just going to wish you the best. <laughs> and when you can't find me, you know why. <laughs> they make movies on this. In satanic Hollywood, which tells you the devil knows. He ain't trying to play it off like, oh, look at these people. You got left. How many movies? How many movies going to take? Trying to desensitize you, sucker you down. It ain't fair. It's guaranteed. I love to show you from Scripture. I know that from Scripture. I, 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 I trust God for this year. Yeah, it'd be great we could get into that. But we are in the season. <laughs> he can come back at any moment. Hello! <laughs> and those who are in expectation are going to have their greatest expectation fulfilled. And the others will be left. And you got people down here who were quasi-disciples left with straight-up evil folk. Oh, that's Matthew 24. That's why he says those who endure to the end, they might make it. You don't endure. Faith isn't. Being saved by faith isn't enduring. <laughs> you just keep the faith. But enduring means works. Faith is gone. 
he has appeared. You have to, just like the old covenant. This, this period of time we live in, you are so blessed. I'm talking to you about a choice. The people before you didn't have a choice. You better get to work. When you're out of here, back to get your butt to work. You're going to have to prove your good works. And he says, if you endure to the end, you might make it. You'll be saved. That's just telling you. If, if, in case you can't, that's not a guarantee. <laughs> I'm talking to you about guarantees. Amen. Y'all got it? Now, with all this, y'all doing okay, but, but <laughs> some people are a little too nervous for me. Uh, with that said, we're in the season, and God, Jesus, gave us some specific instructions about <clears throat> people talking to you about the end. Now, it's, Matthew 24 is right there for you, but that is not discussing the rapture, what I just talked about. It's discussing the tribulation. And it ends with, if you, if you hold on, you, you might be, you'll be saved. You holding on is up to you. That's kind of ugly. Before he addresses the tribulation, he says in Matthew, in Matthew 24, verse 4. It's on your outline there. Y'all ready? They asked him, when's the end of the age? That? That's not his coming. That's not his appearing. Let's read it together. And Jesus answered and said to them, take heed that no one deceive you. It's the first thing out of his mouth. Because there are going to be many coming to deceive you. And here's how you can tell if they're deceiving you. You're scared. Now, see, some of you are nervous in here, but I'm trying to talk you down. They are not going to be doing that. Because only those with Jesus would be talking you down. Because not only he just said, well, don't let them deceive you. Don't let them. Don't you let them deceive you. I told you, run from them. <laughs> Ask the person next to you, did you hear that? Yeah. Now, it says after that, he says, That's, I, but you, can't, you, gotta, you cannot overemphasize that. His first statement, the last statement, you know, you, 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 his first statement is, take heed that no man deceive you. No pastor No foolish news anchor, politician, friend, or enemy. Watch your tails. That's the first thing he says. Are you with me? Take, take heed that no man deceive you. For many, it's coming all, it's all a bunch of people, shall come in my name saying, I'm Christ and shall deceive two people, three people, four people, a hundred people, many. That's the majority. And you should hear of wars and rumors of wars. Does that sound like today? Yeah. See, here's a second piece of advice from your Lord. See that you be not anxious. That's my God. Goes in everything I've been telling you today. It ain't going to be good. But for the righteous and just. And the rising just man see to it, you don't get deceived, you don't get talked out of your stuff, and don't, they're going to do it with scaring you. Don't even get anxious about it. Amen. When did he say that? After he talked about destruction. He said that after he talked about bad news. After he talked about people screaming in the street, wailing and crying, he said, no, 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 don't you be troubled. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Which means... Most people, as he said, they're going to be swept away in emotion. They're going to let people deceive them, which means they were not keeping first place and his word. They were too caught up with friends and news and people. Oh, my goodness. Oh, okay, I got I got I know, I know, I know, I know, I know. So, so look, <laughs> he commands you, don't be troubled with trouble. So if you can't handle, if you lose your peace because you're watching the news, turn it off. 
Let, let me help you out. You can't handle it. If the newspaper, magazines are fooling with your peace, drop them. You can't play with that. You can't handle it. If social media, delete it. Get off the apps. You can't handle it. It's handling you. If, try this out. If it's people in your life that are stealing your peace, walk away. He didn't say you straighten all this out, you fix all this. He said you handle yourself. Now be honest with yourself. You have to handle yourself. If what you watching something, it you, cut it off. Walk away from them people. Delete that stuff. Those who have ears to hear. Why? You got to guard your heart diligently. It didn't say casually. You got to be on it. Because if it gets in there, notice he's talking about your heart. Don't let it be troubled. He's giving you his peace. Anything still there, you got to get rid of it. So number three, we'll build on this. Tonight, I'll give you the word, I believe. We're just, we're just we're, we're talking of instruction about the word right now. Number three, refuse fear, trying to steal God's promises for you. You advancing and possessing your greatest expectations. Expectation, hope comes from the promises of God. So you have to refuse what? Fear. You got to refuse it. Don't play with it. Don't fight it. Say no. Walk away, refuse fear from what? Trying to steal God's promises from you. Steal the promises, hope is gone. Expectation cut off. Faith has nothing to operate on. Are y'all here? Don't give in to your fears. Let the joy of the Lord protect, excuse me, the, the peace of God protect you. You might find the joy of the Lord in there. And refuse the enemy stealing the promises of God from you. You got James chapter 1, verse 2. I'm going to wrap it up with this. Y'all get anything? Yes. Yes. Prospering more in 2024. You advancing and possessing your greatest expectations in 2024. It's not going to be like that for everybody. But the future of the righteous is guaranteed to be bright. But the righteous are as bold as a lion, meaning not scared, not anxious, not timid. That's what John, James is talking about here. James 1, verses 2 through 4. This right here, <clears throat> you, you work on this, um, you're good. You can't be fooled with. It says, my brother, so he's talking about the family, the covenant folk. What's he tell you to do? Count it all joy. It all joy. He didn't say it is joy. If it was joy, he not stupid enough to say something about it. He is the wise, all wise God. So if he's telling you count it all joy, it is not joy. Joy. He didn't say feel it's joy. He says you turn it to joy. You count it, reckon it, add it up to joy. I gave you a little example of that earlier. I haven't seen the promise in my life yet. Shut up. That is not counting it joy. I am that much closer is counting everything I can't lose. I'm a child of God. When's that going to dawn on you? You're going to get your mind renewed if you're going to be transformed. 
your mind is not set with God, it, 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 your emotions are going to sweep you away. You cannot let your heart be, and you can't get scared. And I'm not telling you to hype yourself up. You can't do that. The Word of God, the Word of God, the Word of God. Come on, you tell me. The truth is the way of life for me. It got to be your first and your final. Not what you thought you heard. Keep the word in your eyes, your mouth, your ears. God made promise for everything you'll ever face. So that you could have expectation in that. So that you might receive faith and confidence from him and faith in that overcomes the world. It doesn't say the world's going to go down. It doesn't say the world's going to be straightened out. You overcome it. You overcome the catastrophe. You overcome the evil. I ain't talking about rainbows and puffy skies. I don't care if it's a blizzard whiteout and the Bay Area. Glory to God. Watch this. I knew that was coming. And I'm only looking for God to fulfill what he said. You are my shield. You are my exceeding great reward. You got to show out now, God. It says, my brother, do what? <clears throat> when you fall into what? Oh, see, that ain't joy told you so here's how you see someone who's not in faith they come into the trouble everybody else comes into and they start crying here's how you can tell someone's not a disciple they come into the trouble everybody else is in they start crying and they're scared they come into trouble everybody else is coming into and they're crying and they're scared and make dumb decisions and get swept away. The righteous counted all joy when the trouble hit. When the trouble hits. Why? My God got this. Hold on a second. No. See, I got this promise. I got that promise. I got that promise. See, you can only count it all joy in whatever trouble you come into knowing, not hoping, not wishing, not trying to remember, but knowing that the testing, the trying, the proving of your faith produces. The real way that should be translated is endurance. The last one standing wins. And the trying of your patience. I, I, don't, I don't believe what they say. I believe what God says. They're going to ridicule, preach, all that stuff. It don't matter. That's trying. And that's going to produce endurance in you. And you're going to be the last one standing. You're going to have the last. Because God has the last word. <sighs> Knowing this, that the testing of your faith produces endurance. Not you doing exercises. It doesn't say trials produce endurance. It does not say Hard times produce endurance. It's not what it says. You better have faith in it. The testing of your faith. The trial brings the test. The test is meant to meet your faith. And when those two meet, endurance is produced. Okay? And he says you're not done yet. But what? You have something else you got to do. You got to let it. You got to let what? Endurance. Work you over entirely. Strengthen you up. Toughen you up. Give you the ability to stand. You're going to have to let patience have its, her, its perfect work. Why? So that you can be. Perfect means complete. So he says that you might be complete and complete. You might be whole 
and whole. You might be fulfilled and fulfilled. You're missing it. That's the word for 2024. Prospering more. It's not going to happen in a vacuum. It's not going to happen with gumdrops. It's going to be in trial breaking out all around you. Hell, the, the enemy knows what I'm telling you. So he's going all in. He's letting it all out because Jesus is about to appear. And God tells you, mm, it's going to be bad, but you win. You better count it all joy and let that joy work you over. So you're whole and whole. More and more, fulfilled and filled. What does it say? Missing. Nothing. That's where you shout for God right there. Some people aren't shouting because they're missing something right now. And I'm trying to tell you, missing right now because you ain't letting your faith work. But you can get up on your faith. I didn't give you this one. A righteous person falls seven times and gets up again. Promises of the righteous. The future of the righteous is guaranteed to be bright. Are you going to be or not? Are you going to trust in him and let him make you as righteous or not? Well, you just don't do that one time. You go throughout your days. And when you come into trouble, <laughs> this is why I got this faith. And you hold that faith. And it didn't say you produce endurance. No. That trial trying to get you through your endurance, which is your victory over that world, over that trial, yeah. it gives you endurance. Thank you, Lord. Now, you better let that endurance work on you. you That's coming out of this collision of trouble and faith. Sparks flying. Yeah, yeah. All that stuff they distract you with and desensitize you with and the Marvel movie, all that stuff. Sparks flying, but you inside. Dr. Strange is stupid. He don't know nothing. He ain't got nothing. Who what? Who what? Strange you. I'm an heir of the world. When you're in Christ, you run this piece. And you in there, but you isn't in there like, dude, oh, this is cool. Look at the movie. You in there and you getting worked over by endurance. Making sure you lack. If I don't lack nothing, then, huh, wait a minute, if I don't lack anything, it's it, it going to be hard for trouble to get to me. Oh, y'all mess that again anyway, home. Father, we bless you, praise you, and thank you for telling us about 2024. Thank you for your guarantees. Thank you for your promises that you have backed up with your own life, not our lives, your own life. And thank you for the faith you give to us so we can receive you, we can receive from you, we can walk successfully. You said to just live by faith. We live by it. We put our faith in Jesus. And you make us the just, you make us righteous. We got to live in that faith. We can't just have used that faith to get saved. We got to live in that faith. And that's the victory you give us to overcome the world. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Jesus. You gave us a victory, and our Heavenly Father always causes us to have the victory, to have triumph, to overcome in every situation as we walk by his word and nothing else. It is guaranteed to us. It is guaranteed to be a bright, successful, overcoming future where God has made us whole and whole, fulfilled and fulfilled, complete and complete, lacking nothing ready for the next thing we thank you father for your perfect will we thank you for sharing it with us thank you for giving us ears to hear thank you for giving us a will so we can choose to receive what it is you offer to us and when we do there is nothing and no one who can take it from us for we are just like you we get to choose who we are what we do how we are for we were made in your image and your likeness. Thank you for reconciling us to yourself, by yourself, through Jesus Christ. We're ready for an amazing year.
good times and hard days. Thank you, Lord. We're ready for an amazing year. We do not take for granted. It's not for everybody. But we will let our light shine so all people can see it. And they will be drawn to it. They'll be drawn to you for themselves that you might save them. You might initiate a relationship with them as you have with us. This is why you called us. We accept the assignment. You are the head. We are your body. And we are glad about it. The enemy has no power or ability over us. Jesus, you saw to it. You completely rendered him useless and helpless against us. That's why it's in your name that we pray. And everyone who's in agreement with this say amen.